Okay, so today we're going to go over an 820-3209 that has no backlight. Before I go over what's wrong with this board, let's go over what's wrong with the uh, shipping. So this board came in a little box. It had an envelope on it. It was an envelope and then a box inside the envelope. The envelope looks, it came kind of really tattered and crappy looking uh, because it had a box inside of it. So we rip up the envelope, we see a box with a Chinese return address on it and a, and a motherboard inside of it with no note, no nothing. This has been sitting in a slot for about, you know, three weeks waiting for us to, somebody to call and tell us that they sent us it and we got a call for status and I said, hmm. Is this an air board that came in a yellow box with no note? So long story short, if you don't include a note, we get like 10, 20, 30 little packages and envelopes in the mail every day. If you don't include a note with your name, your phone number, an order number, anything that I can go off of so that I have a clue what this is, I'm going to assume that it was a supplier that sent it by mistake or a gift. So like anything, just we'll go, I could use almost anything, but just put something in the box that says what it is so that I know what, you know, and like what what to expect because this has been I've, this was like days away from getting tossed into the trash anyway so this is a no backlight problem so let's just take a look at some of the backlight area here looks like somebody tried to do something themselves and let's let's just walk through and see what happened here so this is the backlight fuse where you see the little p ah you can't see that just yet see there we have a nice little p now if i do this and i try to measure it let's see if you can see that. So let's see if the backlight fuse is good. It's fine. The connector looks fine. Now when you look around the LED driver area, that's when it starts to get a little suspect. So you have a missing capacitor over here, which while important is not super duper critical, uh, but what's really critical here, you can see that the feedback ball is kind of damaged underneath the chip, which is very typical from liquid damage. It's not too damaged, but you know, enough so. But the main issue here is that the backlight enable resistor one of them is missing. So there's a voltage divider that takes the power going through the backlight circuit and turns that 8 volt into something like 2.7 2 or 3 volts for the backlight enable pin. And that's missing. That resistor is gone. Maybe it was knocked off when somebody was soldering. Maybe it came off in the cleaner. I've been there. I've knocked stuff off before. So that's like this. This is something that I can't I can't really criticize um, because, yeah, I've, I've done that. Definitely been there and done that. So let's just let's just go over the backlight circuit on this particular machine. Uh, let's find it. So what's missing here is this. See R9731. So this is part of a voltage divider. So this is the DC to DC boost circuit. You should watch my video on how a DC to DC boost circuit works if you want to know how this works. I explain it all in depth because this is probably very confusing. Long story short, PP bus SW LCD backlight per is going to come down here, and then that's going to be turned into. Um, into 3 volts by this, uh, 2.7 volts, something like that, by this voltage divider. By the way, a uh, little, little glitch. See where it says voltage 12 point, equals 12.6? This is an error, so voltage will actually equal 8.4. That's a mistake in the schematic. I like catching that. It kind of reminds me that even the, you know, we, we, we kind of work in an industry where all the people who say we shouldn't work on these products say we're not qualified, we're unauthorized, we'll make mistakes. So stuff like this just kind of reminds me that we're all human. And it's a good point here because, you know, it says... Even the people designing this are getting the schematics wrong. If I were to inject 12.6 volts there, I would destroy a good portion of the circuit because the circuit is not meant to handle more than 8.4. So it's just, it's one of those things. It's just kind of, you know, just not, not, not correct. And that's fine. It's always okay to not be correct, but just don't be one of those holier than now. Only Apple is allowed to touch this shit because everybody else can't. Because see, Apple doesn't know how much voltage is going through their own damn boards. 12.6. It's 8.4. Anyway, PP bus SW LCD backlight per. So when this transistor opens and allows PP bus G3 hot to go through to the boost circuit, it's going to have to turn on the enable pin. It's going to have to send voltage to the enable pin of U9701. Now that enable pin's expecting like two and a half, three and a half volts, something around there. If I send eight or twelve volts to it, not nice things are going to happen. So this little voltage divider is there to, to um, this is there to decrease the voltage of PP bus G3 hot. So let's see if we can save the pads here and get this to work. So that actually looks like I can, I can kind of make a pad out of it again. I'm just going to put the micro iron on instead of the standard size one because I don't want to, I want to wipe off the oxidation, but I don't want to destroy the pad. And if I use my regular sized iron, there's a chance that a pad that is savable might wind up getting destroyed. That would be a shame. So let's just turn on the air filter here.
Now, right now, I'm not, not, I'm not really looking to solder directly to the pad. What I'm looking to do is get all the oxidation, the dirt and crap sucked up onto a little solder ball that I run over the pad. So there's a big difference. Because a lot of the people who are involved with, let's say, IPC certification will say that what I'm doing is wrong here because I'm trying to solder on top of oxidation. And you don't understand, they will understand what my actual point is here. I don't want to put solder on top of oxidation. Because if you, put, if you try to solder to oxidation, you ruin the joint. What I want to do is scratch away the oxidation and also have the oxidation kind of get sucked up into the flux and solder ball that I'm creating. So that's, that's why I'm going over it repeatedly. Now the bottom pad is savable. Yeah, that wasn't really a good view. I should have focused a little better before starting. Maybe a little bit of zoom. So the bottom pad is something that's savable. The top pad is something that's going to require a, a wire of some sort because that's, that's not really savable. That's kind of screwed up. Yeah, that's actually very screwed up. Uh, really screwed up. Not gonna... All right, so what I did there is I just met, I got rid of the that insulation stuff all over the all over the the trace. I'm gonna put a little wire there, and then I'm going to find a resistor of that value, and I'm gonna put the resistor of that va that value over there. I'm just gonna take a here's where I'm getting my jumper wire from, by the way. This doesn't look familiar. This is an A1286 A battery from 2011-2012. So that's just a, the, what, the wire on the inside of the battery. And, man, you get this over here. Yes. I have nothing holding that in place, which is why I'm kind of being careful. I'm going to just put some flux and then have the tweezers hold the wire in place so that I can make a nice join all around it. So, okay. I'm going to hold the wire in place here. I'm going to try to hold the wire in place. A sad excuse for tweezers. Be nice and flat on the motherboard. Okay, now... Now it's kind of safe for me to go ahead and get rid of the excess wire. Oh, so we go like this. And here we go. Okay, now. I have to replace a cap and also the resistor that's gone. Now that's a very common resistor value. That's one that I actually really should have in my spool. I actually have it in my spool in 0402 size. I just don't have any in 0201 size. So you know what that means. That means that we begin the scavenging. And that's what you hear happening below. We're looking through the boards to find one that I haven't stolen those resistors from yet. And... Huh. Yeah. Without finding those two. I've, I really got to buy those in 0201. I have a bunch in 0402. Like if I could cut the 0402 ones in half and use them, I would.
that's the sound of me going through a lot of boards that are missing resistors. <laughs> All right. Here we go. All right, let's take some. Let's get the hot air station turned on and ready. While we're waiting for this to get hot here. Wouldn't exactly call that my my best, <laughs> my most even work, but yeah, it's not like it's not like people send stuff here because they want everything soldered on as even as possible. I'm pretty sure that's not why any. I mean, if you watch all of these videos in their entirety and you go through all the channel content. And like your your goal is to find somebody who's gonna put the components on perfectly straight, and you send something here anyway. I don't know what to say at that point. Alrighty. Now I just need to find some way to test this, and then I'll be set. Because this was sent port only. I almost did all that and forgot to replace the LED driver. All right, so let's take a look at that because that is, I, I, I showed you what the ball looked like under that and I have no expectation of that being any good. So, oh. Let's grab one. Kick on the air filter. You see how nasty this stuff under the uh, this is? It's almost like some solder paste looking shit and goo. Ugh. Gross. Try and blow some of that shit away. Let's see if you can actually wick with a micro pencil. Probably one of the dumbest things I've done in the history of this channel. Let's see. Can this micro pencil actually wick pads? Shit. Dude, it can. Dude, the freaking f Whoa, I'm impressed. Okay, I'm not going to say that this is exactly the ideal tool to be doing the job with, but you saw what it was able to do just there, right? This thing wicked pads. Micro pencil. Dude, the Hacko 2032 is a boss. Again, didn't exactly do the most perfect job in the world, but... 
That's impressive to me. What I was able to do. Definitely impressed with that. Okay, we put flux and take this chip. Just take a look at my balls. Happy with the way my balls look. Okay, let's see if I'm an idiot. Did I get do something right or am I an idiot? I shouldn't say it in those terms. I can do something right and still be an idiot. It's because I get something right doesn't mean I'm not an idiot. Okay, let's plug this in. This is an old, cracked, screwed up assembly. What do we get? Yay! Light. Hope you learned something. 